Hey everybody. So here we have a lone teleporter. And what's special about this one is, I can see what's going on on the other end. If you can avoid it, it's best not to stab at a teleporter. You just take it. Sometimes you can get a telefrag this way, um, but even if you don't, you'll go through having a nice convincing teleporter trail around your disguise, and you'll get to a spot that opponents wouldn't expect you at, and it might be otherwise hard to get to. And sometimes you'll get a telefrag anyway. Now, here I'm making a pretty ballsy decloak because it's two non combat classes. What I do is I avoid eye contact and I give them something to believe that I'm jumping over this divider instead of on and off it. The group keep is a great place to practice the strafe and stab and side stabs. You can't really practice these on a walkway, so it's really the ideal spot for it. Jump stabs, however, are great for walkway. I don't, however, recommend trying to jump stab spies usually. It's too easy for them to understab you before you can get the overhead stab. But if it's blind and they don't see it coming, go for it. When you've got targets like this that are covered by a sentry, the gun usually becomes your best option, especially if you're using the ambassador. Targets tend not to be moving evasively, and they don't expect an attack, so you get some pretty easy picks. When you're taking explosive fire, go ahead and jump, and time your jump with the explosion. That way you can do little rocket jumps of your own, and get a little farther from the opponent with your feint, or get to somewhere that they might not expect you to be able to. Here I jump just to kind of give him something to believe, like a fake jump stab, but I watch the heavy and see that he doesn't believe it, so I try to find feign right away. The more you feign and the less time between them, the more likely your opponents are to buy them. And if they don't believe the feign, they'll just get more frustrated. Now, I know this pyro saw me stab that medic, so what I'm going to do is I go up a little further up the stairs and take a longer jump to compensate for him taking the corner wider. This demo I notice is moving in a straight line, so I just go ahead and show him why you don't want to do that. Anyone that's moving in a straight line is very vulnerable to jump stabs and side stabs. Typically I don't go after demos that are camping spawn, but every once in a while I like to dispense a little justice. Notice here I jump before going for this demo instead of running straight off just so I can start it a little earlier and get a little extra distance. However, when you're doing drop, drop stabs on close by targets, uh, it's best not to jump. You just go ahead and run right off, drop down, crouch, and stab. You'll get to them quicker and they'll have less time to react. Now this crazy character is eating my team alive, as you would expect from him if you do So I decide to go after him, which I don't typically tend to do with people that are harassing spawn. I try to use my gun first, and I use my fame just as a damage blocker. And here he jumps me, so I pretend to retreat behind the wall and then charge him right when his jump ends so he doesn't have time to react. Remember, the sensors will block sentry fire, so if you've got an engineer that's silly like this one, go ahead and use your gun instead of risking a, a fail stab. When you're getting pinned in a corner and puffed by a pyro like this, usually it's best to use your gun and just try to nail the headshots. I know it seems hard to do that while you're being airblasted, but a little practice will get you the ability. And it's more reliable than trying to trick stab, you just gotta take a deep breath and try to line up those headshots. I only tried the trick stab there because I was forced to. Remember when using the invisibility watch it's not always best just to run away. You want to set up little ambushes like that to take care of pursuers so you can go on about your business unharassed. When evading you want to keep your eyes on your opponent. Watch what they're thinking, where they're looking, and where they think you are. Just don't backpedal as you move or you move 10% slower. Keep your eyes on them and straight instead. And when you get flashed and you're partially visible, go one way and then go the other. And even against good opponents, it's typically the thing you want to do. Just watch them to see if they fall forward or not. Sometimes you're going to have to decide whether you get a stab or die. 
here, I'm being chased by a pyro and I'm likely going to be lit up if I just run. So I decide to go for the kill even though it's going to get me killed too. Here I'm charging this demo just so he's forced to take out his melee. My only hope is a trick stab in this situation. In Highlander, trick stabs are mostly desperation moves, not something I do aggressively. Again, here it's really my only hope of survival, so I go for it. Here I decloak in plain sight for the blue team to see, then go a direction I'm not actually intending to go, just to give them a false sense of where I am. I go ahead and take this soldier pick because I'm using the spice pool and I'm not really gonna know right away that I did it. And then I go for the heavy pick instead of the medic because the medic had just popped crits and I want the damage to stop so my teammates don't die. They're obviously going to be at low health and the medic doesn't have anyone to transfer the crits to. However, medic's usually the golden pick. I'm going to want to get that again. Um, I know the respawn times on this map which is very important information for you to keep track of. So, because this is a small map, I'm going to be able to get back here in time for maybe one more medic pick. I've got the element of surprise and it turns out to be a pretty juicy decision on my part. Thanks for watching guys, I will see you next time.